Are you born again? It is written in the Word of God that he that is born of God does not commit sin. His seed remaineth in him. He cannot sin because he's born of God. Jesus Christ is the quickening spirit from heaven. Jesus says the words that he speaks, their spirit, their life. Jesus Christ taught a good tree only produces good fruit. Do you believe it? Do you believe that a good tree only produces good fruit? It was the Pharisees. They omitted the wager matters of the law. Faith, mercy, love. But what else? Judgment. See, there's where I got to twist what faith is, what love is, what mercy is. If you have not judgment, it's still your day to get saved, get born again. So it was the Pharisees that were going around with a false judgment, fault finding. But here they are, the omitted judgment. You gotta have a righteous judgment. It was good counsel in the second book of Chronicles chapter 19. And yes, it's found written that you don't judge for man, you judge for the Lord. Fear God and be faithful. Are you a faithful servant of the Lord? For by grace are you saved through faith. Do you fear God? Do you do judgment? Well, if you do judgment, you rebuke sin in the house of God. Jesus did that. He did it with the temple. He died, was buried, rose again the third day, ascended up on high. And then from heaven, he rebuked the churches. Is there some here that say they have faith? might claim charity, but they have left their first love, Jesus will take away their candlestick. Is this the Jesus you believe? This is the Jesus of the Bible. Jesus taught if you're not planted by His Father, you shall be uprooted and from thence cast into the fire. A good tree only produces good fruit. This Bible verse, with all the heresies, all the false doctrine, you're trying to confound God. If you only have good fruit, why are you sinning? And you think you're actually not sinning today, which that's what you should be doing, is not sinning. If that's true about you, dear sir, then why are you fellowshipping with sinners? Paul taught that they should be put out from among you, the wicked. See, evil comes from a man's heart. Evil thoughts, adulteries, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection. These sins, they come from the heart of man. And they defile you. Defile the whole body. But Jesus came so you might have life. That you would repent. Paul taught, they that are Christ have crucified the flesh 
the affections and the lusts. If you live by the Spirit, you should walk by the Spirit. Do you walk by the Spirit? In all truth, can you run without stumbling? This is what is written in the fourth chapter of the book of Proverbs. Through a desire, a man, having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and a good understanding to those that keep his commandments. That's not for any sinners. There's no exhortation there for the sinner, save to repent, to have faith. Are you free from all sin? The sin will lead you into bondage. Imagine you have evil thoughts, revengeful thoughts to your neighbor. You're in bondage to those. You're unlike God who's offering life. You're unlike God because it's not a just judgment. Before Jesus Christ sends someone to hell, he died for the person. If you rebuke sinners to hell, do you offer the gospel of truth? Well, this is no offering of love if you don't rebuke the sins. As well, if you have revengeful thoughts, you must not care about the salvation of the sinner. Grudge not. The Lord will recompense. There's hope for all sinners because Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life. You can be planted into this, the immersion of repentance. The old man can be crucified with Jesus. It's not your skin that's the problem, dear precious souls. It's the sin. Paul says, while he's still in a body before Paul died, he wrote, when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. When we were in the flesh, I'm in a body, you're in a body, are you in the flesh? Physically speaking, I'm in a body, you're in a body. But who's doing the loss of the flesh? Who's in sin? The works of the flesh are made manifest and they are these. Again, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, Antidepressants is witchcraft. Has your pastor told you that? Has he warned about different forms of idolatry, not just the Catholics? Covetousness. It's mammon idolatry. But well, there's hope. You can repent of these sins, have freedom. Be washed by the blood. Having these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves of all unrighteousness, all filthiness in the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. It is written in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 5, Suffer not your mouth to cause your flesh to sin, 
Neither say thou before the angel it was in error, lest God will be angry with your voice and destroy the work of your hands. You get no excuses on Judgment Day for allowing your mouth to cause your flesh to sin, such as filthy communication, using perverse speech, blasphemy, forwardness. These defile the heart of man. You can have a circumcised heart today by faith, but you must repent. God can give the servant of his a heart of understanding, a perfect heart. But also says, let your heart be perfect with the Lord. Paul talked about the destruction of things that he did in his own life. And he also says if he would build back those things up, he would be a transgressor again. Have you destroyed all the sins that you work? There is no salvation in sin, dear precious souls. There is no way to be saved while living in sin. Alas, if you repent of sin, it's not too late for you, Peter. You got to come out of these cult churches with cult names, men's names. You couldn't even go by the name of the apostles. How can you go by the name of a sinner? And Luther was a sinner. He boasted it. He boasted in being a sinner. Jesus Christ was blasphemed. They say he was a friend of sinners. That was blasphemy against Jesus. Jesus was not a friend of Luther. Jesus is the friend to those that do whatsoever he commands. Do you do whatsoever the Lord commands? You're the friend of Jesus if you keep his commandments. Are you living in sin, dear sir? It's not too late for you. It's better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of fools. Is it wisdom that cries Jesus Christ is the wisdom of God, the power of God. Jesus Christ is angry with the wicked every day. Is a wicked person that has wickedness coming from them? You cannot be a good person and have wickedness coming from you. A good tree only produces good fruit. It's not too late for you, sir. You need to get born again. See, this is why you can't go with sinners into fellowship. If you walk with wise men, you shall be wise. Jesus Christ is God. If you walk with Jesus, you'll be wise. Jesus Christ said of the Nicolaitans, he hateth their deeds. 
But why fellowship you with sinners? It is written in the second book of Corinthians chapter 6, Come out from among them and be you separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. That's how you get received. You can buy without money today. Forsake your wicked deeds. The Lord can abundantly pardon you. Jesus is merciful and pitiful. Jesus is, yes, yeah, angry, as I said before. Jesus is full of judgment. In fact, it is written, He loveth judgment. Is this the Jesus you believe who loveth judgment? Who said to judge a righteous judgment, cry aloud and spare not. Open your mouth, judge righteously, plead the cause of the poor and needy. How about rich sinners, covetous? It's perverting of judgment, the oppression of the poor. Violent perverting of justice and judgment in a province. We see it all the time. We're told to marvel not at it. There's high men on earth that might regard this. And let yourself know there's higher than they. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost regardeth it. Is wickedness before God. People go on vacations, blow their money, go to casinos probably too. What do you do with your spare time? Do you serve Jesus? Earnestly. Having all good fruit. Jesus said, follow me, and I'll make you to become a fisher of men. How can you fish men if you ain't telling sinners to repent of all sin? Using a wrong bait. You're not using the Word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Jesus commanded the churches who were in sin to repent. There were two churches who were not in sin. Sin had no dominion over them. That was the grace of God. Are you saved, sir? There's no grace where there's antinomians, those that are lukewarm, those that suffer Jezebel, Balaam's. Are you saved? There's no grace without perfect works. Because it's those that don't have perfect works before Jesus and His Father that will be blotted out of the book of the living. They shall not be remembered. Being absent in the book of remembrance. That's dying without grace. But the grace is available today. But if you only love those that can love you back, what grace do you have? 
But sinners do that. Why don't you love your enemies? Why don't you love people that can't do anything back for you without sinning on the side? Because the sins on the side ain't going to be covered by that. There's no work salvation. For if we sin willfully, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. So you receive the knowledge. You had the fear of God, which is the beginning of knowledge. You repented. The fear of God opened up your mind to your sins. You repented. You stopped doing them. And you heard the gospel of your salvation. You had faith. And now you've sinned willfully, maybe. You're coming into a sinner church, getting drunk, being in remarriage, adultery, becoming a patriot. Being proud of abortion. You might not say that, but it's guilt by association. You gotta walk with wise men, you shall be wise. Don't walk around with an idol flag. And you've sinned woefully. Remaineth no more blood of Jesus on your past sins. It's all current now. And Jesus does not find your works perfect before the Father. Surely the light is sweet, and it is a pleasant thing for the eyes to behold the sun. You see Christ, you walk straight, straight and narrow. You walk without stumbling, you may run as well. Jesus Christ is the rock of my salvation. He maketh my way perfect. You can be saved today. Don't let any Pharisee elders teach you against this doctrine. This is what can be adored. Put on Christ, the new man. It's your day. Put on Jesus Christ. You can be pure, you can be holy. So yes, evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness. If you hate your brother, you're a murderer. This is what the Bible teaches. Yes, they do murder in plain sight. It's wicked before God. What if you hate your brother? It's murder. Wickedness covers a lot of ground. Deceit if you're cheating your taxes, is against God. That Caesar's, render it to Caesar. Say you cheat your taxes, then you let Caesar tell you how to run your church. Oh, you do greatly err. Evil eye. Jesus Christ taught, let your eye be single. Your whole body shall be full of light. Notice that in the body, full of light, there's no sinful nature there. It's a lie. Your whole body can be full of light. But if your eye be evil, your whole body is full of darkness. There's a darkness to someone that's covetous. By scriptures, yes, but also when you think about it rationally, if you pray your kingdom come, and you believe this kingdom will come, not that it's here right now, but that it will come, why are you living for this world? 
It doesn't make sense. Post-millennialism is heresy. Amillennialism is heresy. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, which made him Yeah.